Welcome to the Watch Me Wholesale Show. The way this works is I'm gonna randomly choose a market, then I'm gonna find a distressed property for sale, analyze and crunch the numbers, and then call and make an offer. All that and more coming up. This video is brought to you by 10K Club, a program that pays you $10,000 for finding ugly houses. Learn more at my10kcheck.com. If you're new here, I'm Jerry Norton, and I went from dead broke to millionaire flipping houses, and after doing a 1,000 deals, I created this channel to help you master the art of wholesaling and flipping so you can live your dream life. Be sure to subscribe and click the bell icon to get notified when new videos are released. Okay, guys, I've got up here on my screen a picker wheel, and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna click the spin button. There's 10 random markets chosen, and let's see who the winner is. Boston, Massachusetts, let's go find a deal. Okay, so the first thing that we're gonna do is we're gonna go into Redfin and we're gonna put in Boston, Massachusetts. I'm gonna do this, this one on this episode using Redfin. Uh, you can do this on Zillow as well. I prefer Redfin over Zillow any day of the week because they have a really cool feature that I'll show you which allows you to instantly find distressed properties. So if I go into Redfin now, you can see here it kinda outlined the Boston Massachusetts market. It's given me automatically everything that's active. Uh, Redfin has kind of changed their their uh, their interface a little bit. So I'm gonna go up here to more filters and I'm gonna click on this tab right here. You guys see this? It's called fixer uppers only. And then I'm gonna click done and look at it found a whole bunch of properties that Redfin calls fixer uppers. So Redfin has this really cool filter called fixer uppers. What it does is it will scan all of the actives and it will use keywords that will try to identify a property that is a fixer upper. So they look for things like, you know, needs work, TLC, cash only, as is, a bunch of phrases like that, fixer upper clearly, and then it will serve up a list of just properties that fit that. So it's a really cool algorithm they put together. And then, so here we go, we've got all these fixer upper properties and over here on, on the right hand side, it shows you all these properties and you can do some, you can search by the most recent listings or price or different things. And I'm just noticing right here, there's one right here uh, that just came out six hours ago. So I really like to go after the ones that are, that are brand new because hopefully I've got a way I can get my foot in the door and if I can get the seller and the agent to align, maybe I can put a deal together and beat out the competition. At least that's the hope, that's what we try to do. I highly recommend you set up automated searches. I've done videos that show how to do that. That way, as soon as one of these fixer uppers comes out for sale, you could be right on it. So I'm a little late to the party because this thing's been out for six hours now. And sometimes that's enough time for a bunch of people to set up showings, even get offers in. My goal is within a few minutes of a new listing coming out in the areas that I target, I've got my offer in. Okay, so again, the, we're hoping to line all the stars here. You do this enough times and you're gonna get deals. That's the thing. People say to me, well, Jerry, you know, you did it, it didn't work. Um, well, yeah, I mean, I'm just trying to do this live with you right now. Do it again and again and again consistently every day and you start to get deals. That's how things work, right? It's a numbers game. So right now what we're gonna do is I'm gonna, I'm gonna go ahead and click on this one because it's new. It's called 56 Wilson. Where'd it go? This one. And let's open this up. So if I click on it, it's gonna open up another window. Here's this little property. Looks like a little two bedroom. And let's just quickly scroll through, scroll through some pictures. It looks really clean. Nice little house. There's a garage right there. Front porch. And here we are inside, so it's got wood floors, it's all kind of white. So far I'm not really seeing much distress. Uh, okay, here we go, so you can see some peeling paint on the wall there, there's a big stain on the wood floors. There's that those marks on that wall again. And let's see what the kitchen looks like. So you see these stains right here? There's our kitchen, okay, so oh, it looks like there's a stain on the ceiling right there, might be a leak. There's all that mark right there. There's some stuff on the bottom of the cabinets, but look, appliances, it's got, 
you know, not, maybe paint these cabinets. This looks like a Formica, could put a, put, could put a granite countertop on. But this is a very minimal rehab, and this is, this is uh, the, the downside to this is it'll probably pass a loan, uh, a mortgage inspection, which means now if I try to go after this, I'm going to be competing with retail buyers. Retail buyers clearly can pay way more than I can. So that's kind of the downside when a property is nice enough. Uh, oh, there's some more marks up there. You can see here the stain on the ceiling. So, you know, there's some things that are gonna prevent this from going full retail. It's not a remodel, there's a few issues, but maybe we've got a shot at it. I also wanna check out the description. Adorable two bedroom, one full bath, single level living in great family neighborhood in Weymouth. With a little TLC, this almost a thousand square foot home can be yours to enjoy. This home is bright and sun filled and sits on over a three quarter of an acre of land. So big lot. Detached one car garage with attached shed for extra storage, morning walks, blah, blah, blah. Uh, great home to live in since it's close to the T convenient location to shopping. Bring your ideas to make this house a true home. Property is being sold as is. Okay, so those are some things going on here. What I want to do now is let's comp this property. I'm going to duplicate this tab, take, make a second tab. And then what I want to do is I want to go down to the neighborhood. So I, if you scroll down to the very bottom, then I'm looking for right here, this tab right here. What I like about Redfin is they call this, looks like they call this idle well, something like that. Let's click on this neighborhood and it's going to create the boundary line. So we're right here, right in the middle. And these, and this little section here is that neighborhood. And there's Weymouth. So they kind of are calling this Weymouth. Um, and you can see here, there's actives all around us, 499, 689, but we need to create some filters. So I'm gonna go up here and put just houses. So I just wanna look at houses. I'm gonna put a max of two bedroom because ours is a two bedroom, so I don't wanna look at anything else. Then on my size, I'm gonna put under a thousand feet since we're under a thousand. And then I'm gonna go ahead and switch this from by the way, if you look here with just those filters, let's see, let me turn the solds back off. This is the only house for sale right now that's a two bedroom under a thousand feet in this neighborhood. So let's see if there's some solds we can look at. So I'm gonna turn the solds on. Let's go back a year because we're looking at, you know, two bedrooms and let's turn the actives off. There we go. Okay, so these are all solds now. We got some over here. We got a 405 right here. We got a 388, a 358. Those aren't great, 385. But then look at, look at this, a 448. Let's take a look at this one for 448. So it's a two bedroom, one bath, 988. So it's the same size as us. And cute little house. But look here, you got nice cabinets. You got a granite. Now, uh, not stainless steel appliances like ours has. It looks like a tile floor but kind of nice, the backsplash, a little fireplace. Okay, so this is, this is a nice little retail house. Not totally updated, that's a little dated, this tile in this bathroom and the browns and stuff. Little laundry room, oh, kind of a, kind of a, a little bit of a finished basement here. A little deck, so kind of a nice one. Let's see what the write-up says on this. Open house canceled, seller accepted an offer. And then it basically goes through all these upgrades. I want to go down and look at the price history. Okay, check this out, guys. Came out for sale. This is a brand new sale. This just sold three days ago as of this recording. Came out for $399.9 and sold for $448. Went $50,000 over asking price and went pending like immediately. So this thing got gobbled up. Uh, but that is a, an amazing comp for 448. Now, I don't think we can quite get 448 because, you know, it's got uh, like a deck, it's got kind of a partially finished basement. But other than that, it's very similar in size. It's in the right neighborhood. So I'm gonna go over here to my deal analyzer and we're gonna put in some information here. So we are 964, so I'm gonna put 964. And I wanna bring this thing in Probably around, I think, I think given the market we're in, we could probably get 440. 
not 450, 440, so it's a little bit less. I'm gonna drop down some of these fees here with closing and uh, carry because I've got a kind of an idea I'm thinking. Uh, let me see here, there we go. And give me a minute here, I'll, I'll explain what I'm doing here, but I'm gonna drop this down. Uh, let's see. There we go. Yeah, right around there. All right. So let me explain here what I did with my numbers here. So because this thing is so clean, what I think I want to do is, is um, just buy this thing, maybe spend about $10,000 doing some paint, fix those wood floors. I can get that done really cheap. I can use the refinished wood floors for like four bucks a foot. So sand out those stains, do some paint touch up, really just clean that thing up, some of those issues, and then turn right around and resell it in a super hot market and try to get 440. That might be a little aggressive. Maybe we should drop that down a bit. Let's go 435, somewhere around there. And you know, if I, if I did that strategy, then I'm gonna have greatly reduced uh, closing costs because I would do a flat fee when I resell it, so I'm not gonna be paying nearly the commissions. I am, I am still gonna pick up some fees to, to close on it and buy it, but very minimal. So I'm gonna put 3% closing, I'm gonna put 3% in carry, and then I'm gonna put a, you know, maybe a, yeah, somewhere around there, like a $47,000 spread to buy it, resell it, carry it for a minute, spend about 10,000 on it. So I've kind of changed up all my numbers a bit here. This is kind of outside the formula, but I really like to buy stuff that's really clean. If I can get it low enough, maybe do a little bit of super light rehab, sometimes just trash it out, sometimes just clean it, sometimes nothing, sometimes do some landscaping, some, some really minimal work on it, and then, and then just resell it very quickly. So you know, a few days on the market, few days off the market, then back on the market. And so if I can buy this thing for 351, do a, do a few things on it, and then turn around and resell it for 435, that'd be a really amazing strategy. Now, I probably am not gonna be able to get this for 350. That's the list price right now. I have a feeling that they price this thing aggressively for it to bid up. That's kind of a common strategy right now is I do this all the time. List it kind of low, get a gazillion offers, get a, get a ton of action, a ton of activity, and bid the thing way up. Hopefully that's not. I'm gonna call the agent here in a minute, but what I think I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go in around list price, see if I can get it for cash. If I did, I would go in there super fast in a week or two, try to blow out a few minor things, but not really do much, and then it'll look really nice relist it and see if I can get that top market number. But in order for this to work, I've got to have a couple things. I've got to have a super motivated seller that'll take my cash offer really quickly, cancel showings. And I've got to have an agent who's going to work really hard to push that for me and get it done super fast. Again, I'd love to be having this conversation right now. I'm about to have five minutes after this thing got listed, not six hours. So remember that when you're doing this strategy, but let's call right now I'm gonna look up this agent who's got the listing and see what we can do. Here we go. Hi, Kimberly, how are you doing? I'm great, how are you? Good, good. Do you have a minute to talk about your listing? Sure. Okay, looks like this just came out. Yep, it just went on the market this morning. Great, great. You getting a lot of action, I bet? Um, we're just doing showings at the open house on Saturday. Oh, okay. So you're not doing you're not doing private showings with with individuals. No. That, okay. No, there's no need of that. Nope. Yeah. So one one showing time. Everybody comes at that time if they're yeah, interested. Yeah, that's it. I'm done. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So that's a little unique for me since I'm out of state, but I am interested. Sure. I'm actually a flipper. I'm looking at it as a possible flip. Sure, of course. And I don't think it's a good. I don't think. I don't think it's a good flip, though. Okay. I, mean, I have to say, I, yeah, I just... Why is I that? Mean, well, because it's really not in that bad condition. I mean, it's... I know. I mean, you might want to put a kitchen in. <laughs> it's just cosmetic, really. 
Um, it might, yeah. you know, there well, might be some mold in the attic. They, they, the sellers weren't sure, so there may be a little remediation, but it's not really in terrible condition. I was and thinking I, I refinish the wood floors. Yeah, well, there's a space in the living room. You can see there's a piece of it um, missing. Yeah, I mean, the floors could definitely be touched up. I just don't know. I just don't know if there's enough money in it for you. Yeah. Um, because we're at three, we're at three fifty. Um, you know, maybe you could get four, but I, I don't know what your margins are. Uh, you know, I just I want to be transparent with you. I'd rather be trans, especially where you're out of state. I'd rather be transparent sure. with you. Sure. I appreciate that. Now you're yeah. you're you're thinking the back end on it is four if it had some things fixed up. Yeah, I mean the neighborhood's not going to bring you that much more. I mean maybe it'll go over four, but reason why I'm thinking I don't it. Know if it's crazy. Yeah, the only reason why I'm thinking that is there's there's a comp over on Edge Hill that's a two bedroom. Yeah. That's yeah. sold for four twenty. Looks kind of similar. Yeah. yeah. You, you know what, that's probably where you're at, and I don't know where your margin's at, but definitely needs paint, definitely needs a spruce up for the kitchen. Um, I mean, but it's not, the cabinets probably need replacing. Okay, um, I wasn't thinking you know, cabinets. Yeah, you, I mean, I don't think paint's going to do it on them. I think you might, I think you might need some new cabinets. Mm -hmm. It's not a huge space. Um, I just don't know if it'll bring you enough, especially where you're out of state. Yeah, have you seen the comp over on Commercial Street, which is kind of a busy road, 1088 Commercial Street? Yeah, what did that one go for? That thing crushed it. It came out for sale for for three ninety nine nine, yeah. and closed for four forty eight. That's high. Yeah, I mean, this neighborhood is really good. Um, it's nice, though. It's it, nice, yeah, though. It's cute. It's cute. It's small. What was the square footage on the one? On same the as ours, house? same as yours. It was uh, 988 to one, but it's got yeah. a little deck. It's got granite, you know, cabinets look newer. It's well, like- So here's, you know, here's the thing. If you want, I see what happens at the open house. Uh -huh. and I'll just be completely, I'll be as transparent as I can legally with you. Yeah. Um, obviously I work for the seller, as yeah. you know, um, and I want them to get the most for their money. Yep. Why don't I see what comes in for offers, and if it, you know, if it makes sense, if you're looking, I don't know what you're looking, you know, to put in an offer at, or what your thoughts are, but I think it's probably going to go over three fifty. Okay. We priced it to go. We priced it to go over. So I mean, I don't want to waste your time. Sure. I can just give you a jingle on Saturday, like Saturday afternoon, when I when I know what what I, when I see what's coming in. That'd be awesome. And I can let you, yeah, I'll just let you know. What's your first name? Jerry. All right, Jerry, just, I don't, you might have put that in your text. Just put it in your text and check in with me Saturday afternoon, like at like three or whatever, and I'll let you know where we're at. Okay, so let me ask you, is there any chance they'd entertain a cash offer before the Saturday open house? I guess it depends what the cash offer is. Okay, and by the way, I'm unrepresented, so I'd let you write the offer for me. Are you able to do yeah, that? And it's, and and that's great. I appreciate that. Um, you know, obviously, I want to get the most. Sure. Um, the, the most for the property. So, what are you thinking of for a cash offer? I mean, I'd like to be around where it's listed, or maybe a little bit under. So, I, you know, you're pro you might be right. I might be too low for what yeah. retail yeah, will I pay. I wouldn't even advise them. I just wouldn't advise them to take it until after the open house. So, I'm just. I yeah. just work. I'm very transparent. It doesn't matter if I have both sides. Yeah. Um, you know, I want to do what's right for them. And sure. um, I know these people personally. I um, mean, not that I wouldn't do that on any a property, uh -huh. but I am willing to let you know what's happening after the open house on Saturday. Okay. Do that for you. So you don't think it'd okay. be worth calling the seller and pre just presenting a verbal at, nope. at ask price? Nope. Okay. I wouldn't even recommend they take it because I know it's going to go over. Okay. Yeah. I just, I know it will. It just, I mean, I just put another, I put it my own property on. Um, in a, on a house in Plymouth, and I already have a way over, you know, cash offer. It just, sure. And I price I price things appropriately. Okay, but the, okay. Yeah. So then let's 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 do the open house. It means I'm gonna have to compete with retail, so it's probably gonna go out of my price range. But maybe it not. May, I mean, who knows? May, but that doesn't mean yeah. It, that doesn't mean I might have other stuff for you down the road. You for um, sure. You know. So, it, it, you know, I'm totally willing to work with you on that, too. Anything so you get, I'll let you write. Else that's coming. 
Yeah. Uh, I totally will, will do that. In fact, so, what would be great, Kimberly, is if, if you're able to, you know, let me know about it ahead yeah. of time. I'll get you my number. Yeah. Maybe, yeah. maybe we work out something, you know, off market or whatever. So yeah, I'm totally cool with that. Awesome. Okay. Well then let's touch yeah. base Saturday afternoon, see where you're at and see if something makes sense. Yeah. All right, sorry. Okay. That good, and, um, and I'll let you know as much as I can. Okay, awesome. Appreciate it. Thanks, Kimberly. Okay, okay talk to you All soon. All right, have a good day. You too, bye-bye. Bye. Okay, guys, so I felt a little rushed there. She kind of was in a hurry, and clearly this property is clean enough that it's going to go retail. As you know, if you've been not living under a rock, the real estate market is insane right now, uh, way low inventory, everybody going bonkers over properties. And this thing is on market, it's got good pictures on there, it's really clean. I mean, other than some stains on those wood floors, some paint, she mentioned maybe some cabinet work. But it's, it's clean enough to where it can pass a mortgage inspection, which means now it, I'm gonna be competing with retail. By competing with retail, clearly there's someone that's gonna be willing to pay a lot more than me. However, I follow a strategy where I'll buy stuff, if I can get it low enough, not quite at uh, rehab numbers where I need to spend money on it, buy it at a, at a big enough discount, but enough to where if I can get it low enough to then just close cash, turn right around and relist, and then kind of try to do what they're doing, which is target the highest paying buyer in the market. now. In this situation, they're very smart. This agent knows what she's doing. By waiting, having an open house, giving everybody time to kind of see it, schedule to go look at it, create, a, create an auction environment, really smart idea. In that kind of situation, more than likely I'm gonna get priced out of the deal. But guys, uh, you can look at this whole conversation and this whole analysis and this whole deal as a bust, right? Like, oh yeah, of course you're not gonna get a deal. But by doing this again and again, doing this over and over, in my company we do this type of thing every single day routinely, my team does, it's the stars all align often if you do it enough, which means you get an aggressive agent, they're willing to present a cash offer before all the other showings. I get deals like this all the time where they'll cancel the showings, they'll cancel the open house, they'll take my cash offer, uh, but it takes the right agent and the right seller, agent who's willing to kind of push that cash offer low price and seller who's willing to take a cash offer, not deal with retail. So those two things have to kind of work out, speed to the deal, all of those things need to work out for it to happen, but it's just a numbers game. Do it enough times over and over again and you're gonna land deals, even on market, even in a competitive market. So I highly recommend you do this and every time I do this, it's never a bust, it's never a waste of time because notice she said, hey, I'll call you, hey, I'll work with you, hey, we could do a deal in the future, let's stay in touch. So building those relationships is huge for me because now I've got dozens and dozens and hundreds of agents that know I'll let them write for me, that know I'll let them double dip on the deal and they bring me their deal. So they, I get calls every day from agents saying, hey, I got this deal coming out, take a look at it, give me your number. And it's an amazing way to then get a lot of repeat business. So guys, let me review a couple of things here. You saw my deal analyzer, I'll give that to you for free. Uh, it allows you to run the formulas, put the numbers in, do the calculations. Just go to mydealanalyzer.com and you can get that for free. And I'm always looking for good deals. If you take to heart and you learn the techniques and the skills and the practice and, the, and all the things I teach here on my, on my channel, and you get that good deal, then I'll buy it from you, I'll pay you $10,000 for every deal you bring me. If you wanna learn how to be a finder for me and go out and source and find deals for me, go to my10kcheck.com, register for an on-demand training there where you can learn all the details about that program so that you can start finding deals, bringing them to me, submit them, get paid $10,000. Uh, and um, if you haven't yet, guys, be sure to subscribe to the channel. This is the number one channel on YouTube for all things wholesaling and flipping, and I'll see you on the next video.